Good morning, Trinity Bible Church. Welcome to 2022. We're about two weeks into the new year, and I thought I would give you a challenge. Every year, people make New Year's resolutions, and every year, people fail New Year's resolutions. So as I was thinking, how can we make these commitments, but how can we do it together? How can we do it in a way that we can be accountable, that we can encourage, that we can help one another stay true to the commitment? And what might a good New Year's resolution be? Well, before we get into that, let me try something with you. If you have a Bible handy, go ahead and grab it and try this with me. Put out your pinky finger and try and balance your Bible on that pinky finger. Now, don't let it touch other fingers. Don't let it touch your palm or your wrist and just see if you can get it. It's, it's not easy. It's possibly doable, but definitely not a good way to carry your Bible. But what if you had two fingers? What if you had your pinky finger and your ring finger? You can kind of claw at it. You can kind of get a bit of a grip. But again, it's not a firm, safe way to carry your Bible. And you might see where this is going. With each finger you add, you can create new and clever ways to try to carry it. But even when you're using four fingers, it's not the best grip. If someone wanted, they could easily pull your Bible out of your grip, no matter how you're holding on to it. But once you add your thumb, once you add that fifth finger, you can have a really good handle. You can have a good grip on your Bible, can't you? Well, in the 1960s, some people who were with the navigators realized this, and they made an illustration that we call the word hand. In this illustration, each finger is given a role, a different method that we study and look at and learn scripture, and each method builds off of each other. So we're gonna look at that method today, and then I'm gonna issue you a challenge at the end. But let's start with the pinky. Your pinky finger is going to be hearing. It's the easiest, most approachable way to look at scripture. It is kind of passive. Someone else is reading or preaching or speaking to you. You're merely hearing what is said. But one of my favorite passages on this idea, it's in Romans 10. In Romans 10, 17, faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes through the message of Christ. Because that faith comes through what is heard. It comes from hearing. So we need to be hearing the Bible, hearing scripture read to us. And again, that can come from a Sunday sermon. It can come from a podcast. It can come from the radio. It can come from someone else in your family reading. But we need to be intentional and seeking out opportunities to hear scripture read. But again, if you're balancing scripture solely on hearing, it's going to fall. You're going to fail. And it, sometimes you're, you're not going to remember scripture as it is written. And so that is why we need the second finger. The second finger in this illustration is reading. So we need to be hearing scripture, but we also need to be reading scripture. In Revelation, John begins and he says that blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. Blessed are those who hear the words of the prophecy and keep what is written in it because the time is near. So we actually get to see both reading and hearing working together. John tells us that blessed is the one who reads aloud for as you're reading aloud, you're also hearing yourself, but those around you can hear you as well. Now, not all reading has to be done aloud. You might have your own morning or evening devotions or quiet time or daily bread, whatever your preferred term or method is, but you need that time of reading. Studies indicate that we recall 15% of what we read. Now, some of you are sitting out there and you're like, I'm special, I remember hundred percent of what I read. But the truth is, we don't remember what we have forgotten. So we feel like we remember a lot more. We think we retain a lot more than that 15 percent. But that 15 percent is, of course, better than nothing. So we need to be reading it so we get some of that retention. But that's what brings in the third finger, the third finger being study. If you retain 15 percent of what you read, Studies show that you retain 35% of that which you study. So you're over doubling your effort when you start to study that which you have read. So you'll see these things are continually building upon each other. In the book of Acts, Paul is going around doing his ministry and he finds himself in the city of Berea. 
And he's telling the Bereans of Christ and of uh, his coming, his life, his death, and his resurrection. But rather than just embrace this as true or reject it as false, the Bereans turn to scripture. They turn to the books they had, that being the Old Testament. And in Acts 17, it says, The people here were of more noble character than those at Thessalonica. They received the words with eagerness and examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were true. And so as they heard the message, as they heard Paul and his companions proclaim the story of Jesus, they turned to the scriptures they had, the Old Testament, and they saw, could what they be hearing be true? And as we read the rest of this narrative, we find out it is. Their study proves the truth of the message they are hearing. And they are deemed as more noble because of that. So we too, we need to be like the Bereans. We need to be hearing scripture. We need to be reading scripture. And then we need to study those things that we are hearing and those things that we are reading. We don't need to just take it on face value. We need to lean into it and check it against the whole of scripture. But then we look at the fourth fingers. But we want complete, total retention, don't we? So we need to look at memorization. Memorization is the act of taking information and logging it in your long-term memory for the sake of total recall. So if you've memorized something, you will have 100% recall of that thing you've memorized. Now, if you're like me, you're sitting here thinking, you know, Brian, that's, that's great, that's a good idea, but I can't memorize scripture. It's too hard, it's too difficult. Well, here's a challenge. Turn on your radio next time you're in the car and see how many songs you can sing along to. It's probably more than you think. So, so clearly you have some memory technique, some ability to memorize things. So how can you apply those to scripture? And we see in scripture countless places where studying, memorizing, and knowing scripture are beneficial. One of my favorites is in Psalm 119. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping your word, I have sought you with all my heart. Do not let me wander from your commands. I have treasured your word in my heart, so that I may not sin against you. Do you catch that? David has treasured God's word in his heart, not just in his mind, in his heart. He has taken this scripture, he's taken the words, the commands of God, he's logged them in his long-term memory, but beyond that, they, they echo through his soul. He knows scripture so well, and he treasures it. It's his prime desire. And because of that, he can keep his way pure. We too, we need to memorize scripture. We look at the difficulties, our weaknesses, our temptations, and we can ask, what scriptures will help me counteract that? How can memorizing these things, so I can recall them when needed, how can we leverage that memorization skill. Again, we're not asking you to memorize the entire Bible, but how can you memorize key truths, key passages that you can call on in times of need, in times of weakness, in times of sorrow, or passages of gratitude for times of joy and times of thanksgiving. But again, we're looking at four of five pillars here. So as we ask ourselves, what is the fifth step, the fifth technique that we can use to have a firm grasp on scripture going into 2022. The thumb is meditation. Now, one of the things I love about this illustration is the thumb is the only finger that touches every other finger easily. Uh, if you try and think hard enough, you can make other fingers touch themselves, sometimes with the help of other hands, but the thumb does it just easily and just simply. You can meditate on what you hear, what you read, what you study, what you memorize. And again, there are plenty of passages that highlight the value and the importance of meditating on scripture. But one of my favorites is just about 118 chapters earlier in Psalm, but it's in Psalm 1. The psalmist writes, How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked, or stand in the pathway of sinners, or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bear its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. 
whatever he does prospers. Do, do you catch this? His delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on that day and night. Think about your last 24 hours. What have you been meditating on? What are those things that just get stuck in your mind and you can't get them out? What are those things that fill those blank spaces in your day, those things that you're constantly dwelling on and dwelling over? It should be the Lord's instruction, the truth taught, lived, and displayed by Christ. But then there's this odd promise here. It says, He will be like a tree beside flowing streams that bears fruit in and out of season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does prospers. Now that that almost starts to sound like prosperity gospel, right? Which is some dangerous terrain we don't want to get to. But think about this. If you're meditating constantly day and night on scripture, on the laws, commands, and precepts of the Bible, your entire perspective will change. Those things you do will be different. You won't be seeking a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a giant house. You'll be seeking the redemptive of those people you work with, your friends, your family members, your neighbors. You'll be you'll be seeking to share the truth of Christ with those around you. You'll be seeking to overcome temptations in your own life. And these desires, these transformative passions within you are things that God wants as well, and he will offer you success. So this isn't prosperity gospel. This is the gospel. This is the transformation taking us from fallen people to saints seeking hard after Christ. So as we look to 2022, as you think about hearing, reading, studying, memorizing, and meditating on the word of God, what are you going to do with that? Well, I'm going to have some links in the video descriptions here on Facebook and here on YouTube. I'm going to have some Bible in a Year reading plans. I'll have links to some other videos we did on how do you start with just seven minutes or how do you do a more in-depth study. But I want to know, what is your plan? What will your resolution be for knowing the Bible better this year? Do you have a favorite reading plan? Do you want to go through the entire Bible in a year? Or maybe you want to know the book of John inside and out, and you're going to dedicate 2022 to just mastering the book of John. Or maybe you've never even opened your Bible before, and your resolution is going to be to read seven minutes a day and just see where that gets you. But again, I want you to post in the comments, what is your plan going into 2022? How can we partner with you? I'm going to be starting a new Bible plan. I'm actually going to be starting this on Sunday, uh, two weeks into the year. It's never too late to start. Uh, so I'm going to be starting a, a Bible in a year plan. Uh, I'm going to be reading and memorizing in other areas as well. But what about you? What is your resolution? Again, comment below and help us just keep this conversation going. Help us hold each other accountable. Help us encourage one another. And help us come out of 2022 with a firmer grip on all of Scripture. Until next time. God bless.